This is the moment, baby. The drag queens are coming. You would think we were like Jurassic Park. You know, where the glass, the water just starts shaking. That's our heels coming. Hey. Well, it is so nice to see all of you. I'm so excited for We Are Here season three. But listen, this show seems more important, more needed than ever. Our drag queens, our drag performers. It's a scary time. There are protests happening. And this season, you all are taking that and going through that head on. Um, Eureka, I'll start with you. How was it kind of having this experience this time around? Yeah, you know, it had its challenges, but I think that as, um, you know, the roles that we've decided to take as hosts of the show, um, the experience that we've had on previous seasons, I know for me specifically, really helped me um, guide my way through this difficult time as far as politically. But at the same time, like, I just kind of faced it the way we do every episode normally. You know, I put myself in the shoes of my drag child. I let them know that I'm there to support them and whatever they're facing in their everyday lives, so are we, you know? And um, we were really lucky to have some really important conversations um, that need to be had in the spaces where a lot of these issues are very relevant right now. DJ, AKA Shangela, um, how did you kind of stay in that space of positivity and inspiration that you love to be in, but then realizing and, you know, tackling some of those people and those protesters that didn't want you to read books to kids, that didn't want you to be there. Well, you know what? You have to remind yourself of what your purpose is in the moment that you are living in. And I think that all of our purpose in, you know, creating this show, we're here and going to these small conservative towns and partnering with people and amplifying their voices and their stories, uh, that our purpose is to be there for them. They walk this these roads every day. We come in for one to two weeks to connect with them and, and go through their experience that is in these small towns. So it's just really important to remember the purpose in being there. When you do that, you feel empowered. Like, okay, I have a mission to be here. Let's press on because you're not just doing it for yourself. You're doing it for your drag kids and the people who are going to be touched by watching this show. Bob, we know that, you know, the world feels heavy and I don't mean to be a downer, but it's like, um, it can be tough for all of us. But then when you do go to these small towns, meet these people, feel their connection, feel what you, you being there means to them, how does that kind of just keep you going and, you know, reinvigorate you to do all of the good stuff that you're doing? You know, I gotta be honest, I don't necessarily feel like, I'm not on the folks like, how can I go on with this? How can I continue this work? Because I love what I do and I've been doing it for 14, 15 years now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I don't have to wake up every day and I don't have to grab my bootstraps and I don't have to trudge through mud to do my job because I love what I do. And when I get there and you see these people getting affirmations from their own townspeople, which is what makes it really special. We're not, we're not shipping in people from LA and New York, even people from their community that are support them. You know what I mean? Then it feels good. So for me, it's not a slog. It really isn't. I'm happy to do it. And we're happy that you are doing it. Uh, Eureka, back to you. Why is it that you think, I mean, you know, thinking back when this show began, season one, 2020, obviously such a different time, but what is it now about this weird conversation about drag being protested? I, I mean, it's literally happening in so many different states and we're doing everything we can and glad to change that narrative. But why is it happening now, do you think? Well, I think that we're getting more visibility than ever as, um, you know, queer trailblazers, I think. Drag queens are really representing uh, people of difference in our community, in our country. And I think that people that are not, that are obviously discriminatory or not like-minded are empowered to be more vocal because of, I hate to say it, but, well, actually I don't have to say it. The truth is they, they, they've felt empowered since we had, you know, a presidency that was promoting violence, that was promoting these negative opinions, being able to be vocal and, and show a different side of humanity that is almost like, it's almost okay now versus like, before I feel like people were at least like, cautious and trying to be a class act about it like they felt a certain way but it was very like southern like oh bless her heart versus saying how they really felt and for some reason people are feeling more and more empowered to be vocal about their discrimination and be more open and active in um 
their anti-acceptance for equality and drag just happens to be at the forefront of that. People used you know? to be really ashamed of being bigoted. Yeah. Um, no more. Yeah, Those like, days are Now it's gone. like, oh, I'm cool and I'm a badass if, I, if I'm proud of being a Never mind, I don't want to go into that. <laughs> you know, I can be I can be verbal and colorful with my words. So um may not be suitable for whatever this is viewed on. No, I think you can say whatever you want. But Bob, I would love for you, you know, you you just jumped in there. I mean, elaborate more on that because I think it's such an important point. I think that sometimes um people feel uh, em you feel empowered to be mean or nasty or to bully when you see someone else doing it. You know what I mean? So a lot of times, if there's a bully at school, if one person steps up and starts bullying, other people will start bullying too. But also, when one person steps up and stands up for them, other people stand up as well. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So when you have these bigoted views and you know they're not popular opinions, but you feel ashamed to say them because mm -hmm. I might people might think I'm mean or nasty, but then you see the high, if someone in the highest office of the land doing it, then you say, well, then it, it can't be that bad. I'll do it too. Yeah. Uh, DJ, I know with this show, it's so important for you to go to these small towns and have the queer community feel accepted and give them that special moment. But you equally say it's also important for the people that are not of the community to maybe have that eye-opening moment to be to have their minds changed. Tell me about how we're going to see some of those experiences this season, because I know that we actually, of course, do go to your home state of Texas, too. Yes. Well, this season is probably our most impactful season that we've ever had of We're Here. Uh, I'm so excited for so many people to see and experience what we've been able to do with this show. And really more so than what we've been able to do, but what our drag kids have been able to accomplish, what they've been able to overcome, and what they've been able to walk through in being a part of the show and sharing their stories. So I think that people should look forward to what they know from We're Here already which is um, they're going to see a slice of life that either they're familiar with or maybe completely unfamiliar with, but something they can connect to that will make them feel something. And this season, I think you're going to feel joy. You're going to feel anger. You're going to feel fear, possibly for us. You're going to feel triumph. And, uh, and, and that's the roller coaster known as We're Here Season 3. You know, let's talk about the impact of this show. I mean, there is that deep connection that you all have. But how enriching is it for you just to see how you literally, the three of you, can go in and change people's lives? That's the thing I would say. We're not changing anyone's lives. We're actually, what we're doing is amplifying voices of people that are already in these towns. And it's honestly, what's changing their lives is being supported by people in their community but they didn't know they ever had support. A lot of times, a lot of them are like, I'm, I'm just gonna leave because no one here and love me. No one in this town loves me. So what's really happening is the town is just showing up for people that are already there, sharing thoughts they already have but they're afraid to share them. Because they're, they, they're, they think they'll be alone. They think they'll be standing and shouting by themselves. So then they, when they do this show, they do this. They do these performances. They give these impassioned speeches after the performances, and their own community members are whooping and hollering and cheering for them. People that you thought would want to tear you down are actually standing up, saying, "You matter. You're significant. Your life has value." I love that, and you know, obviously, it's so much about you know. I'm glad all we're doing. Eureka, can you imagine if you were a young person and there was a show like We're Here? What would that have meant for you? And your journey? Well, I think it would have meant seeing myself displayed on screen before I had a chance to see that. You know, I had to find people that were similar, but not people that really represented who I was or or the gender identity discoveries that I've had to go through or, you know, learn how to navigate um, existing in a small town or trying to survive. You know, I went through a lot of really traumatic experiences and a lot of really um, violent and bullying and, and emotionally traumatizing experiences growing up because of the area that I grew up in and how flamboyant and, you know, it wasn't that I wanted to be openly gay. I didn't have a choice. You know, people called me queer before I even knew what it was or before I even knew who I was. I was instantly labeled. You know, it wasn't until later that I learned who I was as I gained experience at life. Um, and it would have just been really beneficial to me to um, maybe learn about who I was and what acceptance and love really looked like in a space similar to mine, you know? I think it would have helped me um, grow a lot sooner 
and maybe avoid some of that self-inflicted negativity and treatment that I presented to myself growing up, you know? Well, thank you for sharing that. So well said, DJ. Any closing thoughts as we look forward to season three premiere on November 25th? We're here, it's coming. We're here, it's coming. And as we say in the trailer, you know, you can sometimes feel it coming. And I'm really excited, I know, to be back with my sisters, um, to share this that we're about to birth to you all, the November 25th, the new season that we're here. It's gonna be something really, really powerful. Yeah. We can't wait for it. Well, nice to see all of you. Congrats again.